I'd like to call this meeting of your North City Council to order. Bottom, please call the roll. Ms. Hall? Here. Mr. Johnson? Here. Mr. Marmy? Here. Mr. Rack? Here. Mr. Roletta? Here. Mr. Blake? Here. Mr. Bubb? Here. Mr. Cost? Here. Mrs. Floyd? Here. And Mr. Guthrie? Here. We have all present this evening. Next, we have the invocation by Mr. Johnson, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Please rise. Let us pray. Lord, we come to you as humble servants. Be with us and bless us in our work and our deliberations. We are thankful for the spring and thankful that we can live in a place of peace. Be with those in need. Be with those who experience joy. And may we continue to serve you and our neighbors. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Is joy me in the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Thank you, Wayne, for getting me started. It's good to see you again. Next on the agenda this evening, we have caucus. That's the time for council to discuss anything that may be pertinent to the agenda this evening. Do we have anything? Okay. Next, we have the minutes of the March 16, 2015, New York City Council meeting. Is there a motion to approve those? Motion. Motion by Mr. Rath. Second. Second. Second by Mr. Johnson. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That passes. Thank you. We have two reports this evening of standing committees, one from capital improvements and one from personnel. It lists finance and service on here, but we don't have those minutes done yet. Somebody decided to take a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> the tan one up here beside me. So uh, those will be on our next agenda. Okay, next this evening we have a public hearing. We'd like to open a public hearing. Autumn, would you read it, please? Notice is hereby given that the Newark City Council shall take action upon Ordinance Number 14-36 on April 6, 2015. Said ordinance accepts a proposed amendment to the zoning map attached to Ordinance 08-33A, which would allow the change of zoning classification of certain real property generally described as 2266 River Road, Licking County, Ohio. The amendment would change the zoning of the property from AG Agricultural Zoning District to MFR Multifamily Residence Zoning District, zoning code of the City of Newark, Ohio. Thank you, Adam. Mr. Rhodes, could you come up just a second to make sure I have this straight and everyone does? I understand this piece of legislation we have for the public hearing. If this is passed, then there's two options that you're discussing, whether we do a $44,000 or a tip. Yes. What, what we did is uh, Councilman Marmy had asked uh, early on that this be voted, the rezoning be voted on separately from an agreement with the developer. The agreement that we have with the developer is just that. They will pay a one-time fee to the city of $44,000 or they will pay the attorneys to have a TIF put into place which the city would receive those dollars each year for roadway improvements. And should this pass tonight, I, I would be back in service committee uh, next Monday night to uh, make a presentation. The administration prefers the TIF. Uh, um, mechanism, but uh, again, that would be up for council to decide. But uh, that's that's why we're doing it this way. Thank you, Mr. Rose. This is a public hearing. Are there any comments for or against? I'd just like to raise your hand and come on up. Sure. Just give us your name and address. Sorry, uh, John Lattelier, uh, Senior Vice President of Redwood, uh, two three seven seven five Commerce Park Drive, Beachwood, Ohio four four one two two. Close enough. Uh, I, I'm here just to, I guess, answer any questions that there may be of council. I didn't uh, prepare a real formal presentation. Uh, we're just proposing to expand what we're already constructing on our River Trails Phase 1 uh, over onto this property with an additional 44 units. Um, I do have a trifold brochure if, if council would like to see, uh, you know, a little bit about our company. There's one for everybody there. Uh, I'm here to answer any questions. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak in this public hearing, either for or against? Once again, anyone else for or against? Okay, we're going to go ahead and close the public hearing. Autumn, would you read this uh, for the second reading? 
Ordinance 14-36 by Mr. Cost, Mrs. Floyd, Mr. Marmy, and Mr. Rath, an ordinance changing the zoning classification of certain real property generally described as 2260 River Road, City of North, Licking County, Ohio, from that of AD Agricultural District to MFR Multifamily Residence District. You've heard the second reading of 14-36. What is your wish? Mr. President. Mr. Cost. I'd like to make a motion to adopt 14-36. Motion by Mr. Cost. Second. Second by Mr. Bob. Is there any discussion on 14-36? Mr. Rapp? Yeah, I guess I'll wait a little bit. You know, I, I would, I, I gotta be, I gotta be honest with you, I'm very torn on this. I know we've had some residents that have expressed disinterest or dissatisfaction uh, with the development in that area um, and, and a lot of concern and I totally understand their concerns. Um, I myself have expressed some concerns about uh, just the general attitude of the company and their willingness to be a good neighbor. And they told us that they, they would and uh, in some cases have acted that way in some cases have not. Um, you know, this is we're asking to rezone a property that's to multifamily that's right next to a property that's zoned for multifamily. Mm -hmm. If we vote this down, uh, I could anticipate a court case, and and, I, and then it's still going to get rezoned. So I, I can't vote against it, but I I don't know. I guess I just have some general concerns. Uh, still, um, and, and hope that they will be good neighbors. Thank you, Mr. Rath. Anyone else? Anna, please call the roll to vote. Ms. Hall? No. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Marmy? Yes. Mr. Rath? Yes. Mr. Roletta? No. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Bub? Yes. Mr. Cost? Yes. Mrs. Floyd? Yes. Mr. Guthrie? No. 14-36 passes 7-3. Thank you. Next on the agenda this evening, we have communications. We have one, two, three, four communications this evening without objection. Those will be received and filed. Uh, we have a little agenda misprint this evening. Next on the agenda, we have comments from citizens. That wasn't left off intentionally, so you wouldn't speak. <laughs> That was just uh, hmm. left off also on my vacationer. Yeah. <laughs> so. We have two sections for comments from citizens. One is now and one is after the legislation. I just ask you to raise your hand and come on up and you can speak. Uh, just let us know what's on your mind. This is not a question and answer with council. This is your opportunity to be heard. Mr. Butcher. My name is William Butcher. One, let's see, 263 Union Street, good and back. I thought that my neighbors been complaining to me about the potholes in the back of the alley where I live. They asked me, said, William, what are you going to do about the potholes? I said, look, I'm not on, I'm not a city council member. I said, well, I do the, the, I said, well, I talk to the city about the fixing the potholes in the alley. Now, I'm, my caseworker has been uh, driving through the alleys and they, it's pretty rough on their vehicles. And uh, I've been seeing a lot of people uh, hot run through there with the potholes. And I just, I just, I was just, I just really blown away by what they've been doing to believe the, the, the speeds of the potholes and everything else. And, you know, I was just, I just wondering what the city's going to be doing about it. My, uh, uh, Viper 4, Storm 4, what forecast? Should be, should be, uh, moving out here by later, later on Saturday, later tonight. But tomorrow, chance showers or thunderstorms. We've got, we got a high little pressure system that's coming through Ohio. Once that uh, comes through, we're getting there, uh, uh, from Vonder. It's going to be storming. Uh, right here over Ohio for the next few days, we're going to see some temperatures mid near 70 to 75. But most of the people will see temperatures in the mid upper 80 by middle next week. By, by middle next week, down, down around the Ohio River. I will get you about before 10 4 weather forecast. Thank you, Ray. <laughs> Anyone else for this first section of citizens' comments? Okay. Let's go on to uh, ordinances on the second reading, 15-06.
Ordinance 15-06 by Mrs. Floyd, Mr. Cost, Mr. Marmy, Mr. Rath, Mr. Blake, and ordinance amending the position classification, pay range, and department authorization tables of the Department of Property <coughs> Maintenance by reclassifying the account clerk one position to the position of property maintenance inspector slash analyst and setting compensation therefore. You've heard the second reading of 15-06. What is your wish? Mr. President. Mrs. Floyd. Uh, I'd like to make a motion that we pass 15-06. Second. Motion by Mrs. Floyd, second by Mr. Bubb. Is there any discussion on 15-06? Mrs. Yeah, Floyd? I, I'd just like to say that we've all been saying for a long time now that we need more help in property maintenance. And I think by reclassifying this position, it gives us some of that help. I'm not saying we don't need more at some point, but at least I think this will help. Thank you, Mrs. Thank Floyd. You. Anyone else? Autumn, please call the roll to vote. Ms. Hall? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Marmy? Yes. Mr. Rath? Yes. Mr. Roletta? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Bubb? Yes. Mr. Cost? Yes. Mrs. Floyd? Yes. And Mr. Gutton? Yes. 15 06 passes 10 0. Next, we have ordinances on the first reading 15 07. Ordinance 15 07 by Mrs. Floyd, Mr. Cost, Mr. Marmy, Mr. Rath, and ordinance amending the position classification, pay range, and position authorization tables of the City of Newark Division of Cemetery and Parks to abolish one full-time position of project assistant and one full-time position of Cemetery and Parks crew leader and creating one full-time position of Cemetery and Parks crew leader project assistant. 15-07 will be held for a second reading. Next we have 15-08. Resolution 15-08. By Mr. Cost, Mr. Blake, Mr. Rath, Mrs. Floyd, Mr. Marmy. To this is an ordinance to provide for the issuance of $370,000 of bond anticipation notes in anticipation of the issuance of bonds for the purpose of paying the cost of improvements to the city's landfill and all necessary appurtenances thereto in declaring an emergency. 1508 is on the first reading, but it is an emergency. What is your wish? Mr. President, Mr. Blake. Uh, move to. Uh, Adopt a 1508. Motion by Mr. Blake, second by Mr. Bubb. Is there any discussion on 15 08? Seeing none, Autumn, please call the roll to vote. Ms. Hall? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Marmy? Yes. Mr. Rath? Yes. Mr. Roletta? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Bubb? Yes. Mr. Cost? Yes. Mrs. Floyd? Yes. Mr. Guthrie? Yes. 15-08 passes 10-0. Next on the first reading, we have 15-09. Ordinance 15-09 by Mr. Blake, Mr. Cost, Mrs. Floyd, Mr. Rath, Mr. Marmy. This is an ordinance to provide for the issuance of not to exceed $2 million of bond anticipation notes in anticipation of the issuance of bonds for the purpose of paying the cost of the Buckeye Corridor Stormwater Plan sewer improvements and all necessary pertinences thereto in declaring an emergency. 1509 is on the first reading, but also an emergency. What is your wish? Mr. President, Mr. Blake, move to adopt 1509. Second. S motion by Mr. Blake, second by Mrs. Floyd. Is there any discussion on 15 <coughs> Mr. President, um, I just want to say that the uh, you know, stormwater, obviously, it's being spring, so water and rain throughout our cities going to be occurring was definitely this time of year, but the residents affected by the Buckeye Quarter stormwater plan have been waiting for um, action for a long time. So I think this project's a good project that Mr. Loomis and Mr. Moore had brought forward to us. And um, starting with 30th and the Washington Street um, intersection, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Church. Church Street, thank you. I correct myself, or Ms. Rath, correct me. Uh, but that will be the beginning of getting to other uh, areas in this plan. So I think this is a worthy project. I'm glad to see it before us today and hope everyone supports it. I do have, have to say, though, um, I did have a coffee with our auditor, and it's just um, this will be new debt for us. And so um, the auditor and I have talked and, you know, trying to understand what our deficit, you know, our annual debt versus our overall debt. And so hopefully we can work out some issues to uh, better communicate that or make it more uh, easily accessible as to knowing what our debt and our de versus our deficit is. So uh, just making sure that all council knows that this is new debt for us. So. Uh, but I do support it, so thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Blake. Anyone else? Autumn, please call the roll vote. Ms. Hall? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Marmy? Yes. Mr. Rath? Yes. Mr. Roletta? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. 
Mr. Bob? Yes. Mr. Cost? Yes. Mrs. Floyd? Yes. And Mr. Guthrie? Yes. 15-09 passes 10-0. Next, we have resolutions on the first reading, 15-23. Resolution 15-23 by Mr. Blake, Mr. Koff, Mrs. Floyd, Mr. Rapp. A resolution appropriating monies for the current expenses of the municipal corporation. 15-23 will be held for a second reading. Next, we have 15-25. Resolution 15-25 by Mr. Blake, Mr. Koff, Mrs. Floyd, Mr. Rapp, Mr. Marmy. A resolution authorizing and directing the mayor of the city of Newark to apply for financial support from the state of Ohio 2015 Federal Land and Water Conservation Fund Program. 15-25 will be held for a second reading. Next we have 15-26. Resolution 15-26 by Mr. Blake, Mr. Koss, Mrs. Floyd, Mr. Rapp. A resolution <coughs> authorizing and directing the Director of Public Service to enter into a lease purchase agreement for the lease purchase of one EMS transport medic unit for the Division of Fire. 15-26 will be held for a second reading. And uh, finally this evening we have 15-27. Resolution 15-27 by Mr. Blake, Mr. Cross, Mrs. Floyd, Mr. Rapp. A resolution appropriating monies for the current expenses of municipal corporation. And 15-27 will be held for such reasons. And that concludes our legislation this evening. Thank you for your attention. Next on the agenda, we have the second opportunity for comments from citizens. Same rules apply as the first. If you'd like to speak, just put up your hand. I'll recognize you and we'll get you up here and uh, allow you to say your piece. Gotcha, Charles Moore, 120 North 24th Street. Thank you. Um, one of the things I just want to, well, there's two things here. First is uh, about emails uh, and all the council members here. I sent out a group email um, probably about a month and a half ago to everybody. everybody. It was a, and as mail goes through the Postal Service, I think we know you can go regular mail, like send you a letter registered mail where you can sign for it or somebody else or um, uh, what they call a, a registered mail and then there's a there's a uh, certified registered mail where you actually have to sign for whatever you're picking up so I sent out an email that was also marked high priority for an ask reply uh, read reply and uh, also in the subject matter to confirm that the email was actually read. It wasn't like I was asking for a bunch of questions to be answered or anything like that. But in the last bottom paragraph, couple sentences, so just out of courtesy to know that I know that you have read my email, which was not long, lengthy, or anything out of the ordinary, just please reply in the subject matter or something. Just three words. That's it. That's all I was asking. You didn't have to say good email, bad email, thank you, no thank you, whatever. And I've not gotten any replies. So I just want to say, everybody says they read the emails. I think, uh, well, I don't know how you, that's, that's four tiers. It's an email, high priority, read reply, plus I put subject matter. If you read this, just put that in there, nothing. Um, and that's okay, because, you know, emails happen uh, where sometimes something goes wrong. So if somebody did, I, I will stand corrected. And it's not too late to reply, by the way. <laughs> Uh, the other thing, too, is I want to get on to is, uh, oh, I think it's a few weeks ago, um, I wanted to bring up the word young. I think we all know that young is a relative term. Um, it's a descriptive term. I don't think it's a derogatory term. But it was used here a few meetings ago and concerning Alex Roletta. Um, I, I don't think, you know, saying young, Alex, you are young. And I would say probably by... I don't know, majority of the people in this room. And that's not, a, not nothing offensive, it's a, it's a fact. So saying young Roletta, I think, is perfectly fine and acceptable. It wasn't derogatory. Um, so I think if, if someone wants to misconstrue that into something that it isn't, you know what I'm saying? And not only that, I think uh, Alex is a big boy. I think if he has a problem and he wants to stick up for himself to say something, he has an opportunity to do that. I mean, I think that's fair for, for, for someone else to point something hell like that. I think if, if I was you, I'd be a little bit embarrassed myself that someone else is painting out something there. And I, I just don't think it was necessary and I don't think it was out of place. Uh, because like I say, uh, young is just, it, it's someone could say middle-aged or old, you know, to someone. It's descriptive. And it's a relative term. 
So I think before sometimes I talk about some of these issues, I just want to get some of the communication stuff down first. That's it. Thank you. Thank you for your time. I, I will say this about the email. I know I personally am having a problem with my city email, and I know John Carson's working on it. I don't know about anybody else, but I know I've not gotten... What's his email address? He, uh, what is his email address? What is your email address, sir? Uh, 3C Solutions at roadrunner.com. It's a numerical three, or the letter three, or the number three, sorry. Number three, then C, then Solutions? Correct. And, you, and when did you send that out? I'd say it was Roughly. a month and a half ago. A month and a half okay. ago, though. Well, and I apologize because I know I'm having trouble with mine, but I don't know about it, whether anybody else is or not. Uh, so, so we'll, yeah. Well, we are working on that. I mean, I, well, I don't know if I stated this or not. But I also, there was, I did get out of all the ones I sent, I did get like I think four read replies. So, the, so I know the package was open. Okay, thank you. So, Miss Harder, where are you? Where are you next? Nikki Arter, 1342 Jobs Road, Newark, Ohio. During the March 16th meeting when Newark City Council voted to do nothing with the current dog law and the BSL, the following made these statements. Mr. Koss said he was concerned there was nothing in place to address any irresponsible dog owners if the legislation were repealed. Mr. Roletta said, I do not necessarily believe that breach specific laws are the answer to this problem. However, the proposal before council does nothing that would help hold bad owners more accountable for their animals. Without additional measures that would promote owner responsibility and public safety, I have come to the conclusion that I cannot support this proposal. Mr. Bubb said nothing at all. Mr. Bubb has never addressed us as citizens who mean anything to him, for we are invisible to him. For now, and Mr. Guthrie said, I am determined to get it right and bring forth legislation that makes sense. Six council people fought the citizens who came to all meetings making arguments for a silent majority who never came to council. All fought for people that never once voted their opinions publicly. All the no votes listed to dog.org and not Newark City citizens. But some stated their reasons couldn't be passed on March 16th. All of you owe these citizens a timely counteroffer of your version of repealing the BSL and making bad owners responsible. You had time to amend but did nothing. Are you still going to do nothing? To all the no votes, with all your reasons, where is the new improved legislation you promised? Please schedule a safety meeting tonight and get this back on the table with your revisions. That's it. Thank you. Mr. Lyle? Yeah. You, did, you had your hand up, right? Yeah. Okay. My name is Terry Lyle. I'm the 294 Stair Road here in Newark. Uh, I'm going back to the emails. I have found that if I send out a blanket email or if I put everybody in, it gets bounced back to me that the server didn't accept it. So it's gotten to work. If I want to send an email, I have to go in and send individual emails to each person in order to, for anybody to get them. And this has happened to me numerous times and I've had a couple other people tell me the same thing. I don't know, I don't know why it's not, why they're bouncing back, but they are. And as far as the BSL, let's get this thing right this time. I'm all for strict penalties for people that are irresponsible and abusers. I'm all for that. But I'm also all for the people who own these dogs not to be hogtied by an unenforceable ordinance just because they choose a specific type of dog. That's all I have to say. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone else? Hang on, William, you can go last. Okay. <laughs> uh, Paul Moran, uh, 63 North 4th Street. Um, I was here at the last council meeting, and I spoke out against the Advocates 5 to Thrive um, series I got going. And as usual, I was correct, as we saw in the following article, that they falsely claim North has 5,500 drive openings. Why aren't they filled? 
for we all of us North residents know that's false, but somebody on the internet miles and miles away, they may accept that for um, gospel truth. Yeah, they may. And um, it's sad that we have this kind of um, newspaper that's deceiving the people left and right. And the answer to that the answer to that question is those jobs do not exist. And why? Because all the job losses we've had. Meyer, Newark Electro Plating, Metal Specialties Corp, neighborhood stores, and yes, even the advocates printing presses staff, all out of work. And that's been within the last two to three years, all these job losses. I encourage the paper to at least correct this false, untrue front page statement. You know, you know some right red, right bold print. So they really bragged it up. I don't know why. I have a couple other separate items. Um, there's a sewer cover and curb and pavement that is completely sunk into the Union Street. It's completely down in there. It's got to be fixed. The asphalt's broken up and the curb, the sewer lid's down in it. Uh, this needs to be taken care of right away. Uh, next, there's an unsecure vacant building over here on uh, West Market Street near South 6th. Uh, one of the doors is propped open, and the other door has no knob on it, so it's easy access to homeless or drug dealers or whoever wants to use the building. Yeah, I just brought up the uh, Market Street building here not too long ago, and it's still standing, unfortunately, but there are signs on it. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moran. William? I'm William Butcher, 263 Union Street. Uh, did, did, is there is a narrow pothole up around Chile Valley Road, around, up around uh, West Main Street, around the uh, West Main Street. Those potholes need to be uh, patched up. And my, uh, my, my guy, Frank, he's a bus driver. He's been uh, coming to me asking me, he says, when, the, when West Main Street uh, Paul is going to be patched up? I said, I don't know when. I don't know when, but he's asking me, he says, can you on city council and let them know about it? I said, okay, I will. So I'm coming to you tonight and asking you about those potholes on West Main Street and the uh, alley that's behind me. It's it's, it's uh, well potholes. It looks like a, it looks like a Swiss cheese you know, with holes in. I just wonder what the city's going to do about it. I'm afraid people might break an axle or bust a, bust a tire on their cars or you know let's see something done about that. And uh, my five four forecast mainly cloudy the rest of the night. Chance of rain by tomorrow. High is about six to seven. Chance of rain by third Wednesday. Two short thunderstorms by Wednesday, high about 75. But people can see temperatures mid 80 down around the High River. I will get to the for four forecast. Thank you, <laughs> Anyone from the administration this evening? <coughs> we were done, Mrs. Barber. I'm sorry, I just got here. I had to write in from Columbus. Um, I'm Rhonda Barber. I live at 917 Glenmore Avenue. And um, I just want to take time to thank the law director for taking time out of his very busy day to sit and meet with me to discuss the BSL laws and all the procedures. Um, thank you, Doug. Um, but I do want to tell the elected council that I sat here three or four times and none of you dispelled any of the myths that I heard. Um, it took the law director to take time to say, no, there's an administrative procedure and there's some other things that need to be done. And so as our elected body, you guys need to better communicate with the people that elected you. Um, Mr. Bubb, you have your office number listed, but there's no prompt, so I don't know how to get in touch with you when we call. Um, I just think that there's been a whole bunch of stuff going on, and you guys could have done a better job in communicating what's going on with BSL. And hopefully, um, in my conversations with Doug, he may put a link on the website to kind of explain things and tell people where to go and what to do. And I'm meeting with the 
police chief tomorrow for the same thing, just to make some inroads because I see lots of division and I think it's your responsibilities to bring us together and not tear the community apart. And on a final note, um, I met with the mayor, and he is reestablishing the Human Relations Commission. So if anybody wants to sit on the commission, send the mayor a note. Um, I think there's, I don't know how many people are on the commission. Five? Five or seven. Um, so if you're interested in sitting on the Human Relations Commission, which is a feel-good commission um, where people can come. Are you laughing? That was Mr. Rat. <laughs> I, I know not to laugh at you, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a feel-good commission where people can come and vent and we kind of provide some direction on how they can have whatever issue they're having within the city resolved. So that's it. Thank you. I'm actually a little impressed that you have that sweatshirt on and Mr. Sasson still met with you instead of having a Clemson sweatshirt on. <laughs> Oh, you, oh, yeah. He had it on. He had it on. She was okay. Thank you, Mrs. Bowden. Okay. Anyone else? Yeah. Alley Long, 217 South Quentin, because of the law that you guys passed on BSL here in Newark, I have to now check in with the PO once a month. I might even have to wear an ankle bracelet, monitor, and I have to be supervised because I was minding my own business and my house, and so was my dog. Your guys' law got me in trouble. It needs passed. Something needs to be done. Because this has gone way too far now. I understand a fine slap on the wrist, but two fourth degree misdemeanors having to wear an ankle monitor and being supervised every day, all day long. <coughs> That's a little harsh. That's way harsh. But y'all really need to rethink about that. Please. Thank you. You do know that's the same law that's been on the books for a while. I mean, it's well, not. Yeah, but new. because you guys won't drop it. Change it. Well, I, I understand. I, I understand your point. I'm just making that point better. A lot of people don't know about the laws. To this day, they still don't know about it until right. they get caught. It's true. Anyone else? I know someone else had their hand up behind our auditor there. Yes, sir. My name is Lloyd Trickle. I live at 388 Mount Vernon Road. And um, I got a dog problem too. For eight months I've been trying to get that woman to keep asking her, please let you take your dogs elsewhere, not my front yard. My front yard's so full of crap, nobody even cut my grass anymore. Because they ain't going to walk through it or run their lawnmower through it. Now, Carol, whatever I got, got, I guess she did something to get her stopped for a while, but. That didn't do, didn't last long. I come home today, and there's a big pile of manure in my front yard, up the southern sidewalk. And uh, <clears throat> one day during the winter time, there was snow on the ground, and there was a fresh pile on my front yard. So I got this. I didn't get the snow shovel, but uh, I had a friend get take a snow shovel and dump it on our front porch. So what she do that night? She busted out the side window of my house. Our house is about probably 15 feet apart, and it was a side window that got busted out. And she busted out my window, and you know, I called the police. The police come up and knocked on her door. Didn't get any answer, so they left. So now she's doing it again. She got three big dogs, and I just can't seem to get anybody to do anything about it. I warned her, I said, please don't, and other people warned her, and everybody else t tells me, she brings those dogs in your yard all the time. I said, I know, but what can I do about it? So uh, that was one thing I wanted to say. Another is that <clears throat> uh, I got a sob story to tell you. Uh, I'll soon be 75, and uh, your maintenance guy just you won't leave me alone. He just picks on me. He's spent all my retirement money trying to trying to satisfy him. I come down, went down there a couple of different times and tried to talk to him. Say, I'll do what you want, but give me some time. You know, don't give me 30 days. I can't work anymore. 
So uh, I can't do anything for myself anymore. And uh, <clears throat> so now he's spent all my retirement money, and uh, I've worked all my life. I don't drink or I don't smoke. I haven't done that for 28 years. I've never done drugs, and uh, I can't even afford teeth. When I was in a wheelchair, but <coughs> ran over my teeth and busted them up. I can't afford to buy new ones. I don't have insurance on my house or a stove in my house. My ceiling leaks in my kitchen. No money to fix it all because he's breaking me up. He's charging me $500 for each property I got. I have got a bunch of rentals. It was okay there for a while, but the economy went bad, and they're sitting empty, and they break into them. They stole all the copper plumbing out of a couple of them, all the, all the wiring and everything else. I put screws in the door to bolt them shut and everything, and they go down there a couple of days later, and there they are, I busted into them again. They're a bunch of druggies is what they are, I guess. And... Uh, I've told that Joe Paul, you know, give me some time. You know, he's charging me five hundred dollars for this and five hundred dollars for that and everything. It's, he wants me. He's not going to be happy until he sees me living under a bridge. So uh, I don't know what I can tell you. I'm just playing, playing about that and about his. <coughs> he wears that badge and he wants to bully you all around and show you that badge that he's king of the roost. I can know no pleasing him. So he gets me a hundred fifty dollars for because I didn't have an address painted on my building or or stamped on my building, whatever. God, I delivered pizzas in this town for twenty three years, and half of the addresses I went to didn't have an address on the buildings. Then I moved people for twenty four years, and I know half the people don't have addresses on their buildings, but, but I get fined for it. Got me for chip paint on the house, and I'm not allowed to scrape it off. But it needs painted, but he won't let me paint it. He says it'd be ten thousand dollars fine if I try and paint it. So, because uh, he said there's lead paint on there. So, what do you do? So, uh, I guess that's about the end of the sob story. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Jordan. What did you say your address was? Mine, 388 Mount Warner Road. Thank you. Yeah, the person with the dogs is uh, three, probably 386 Mount Warner Road. Thank you. Anyone else? Anyone from the administration? Our auditor, Mr. Johnson? I'll pass. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Our auditor, right. Director Sasson? Thank you, Mr. President. I'll pass. And the mayor is sick this evening. Ms. Hall. Thank you. I'll pass. Mr. Johnson? I'll pass. Mr. Marmy? I'll pass. Mr. Rapp? I'll go pass. Of course. But I'll be brief. I just wanted to publicly thank Mr. Rhodes. We had a, uh, uh, a group of citizens that were very concerned about an alley with a lot of potholes that had access to about 16 different families. Um, and uh, I contacted Mr. Rhodes on that. And amazingly quick response. Um, and everybody's happy, everybody's satisfied. So I want to thank him for that. Uh, if you're having troubles getting emails to us, sending them as a group, um, don't. Just send one email to Autumn and ask Autumn to send them to us. Uh, Autumn is our clerk, and she can send them out to all of us and, and does many, many times every single day. So we know she has no issues getting emails to us. So if you can get an email to Autumn, she can get them to us. But I'll pass. Thank you, Mr. Rapp. And that is... A Klein at NorcOhio.net. K, K L K L E I N. I always spell that wrong. Mr. Rilletta. Thank you, Mr. President. I will pass. Thank you, Mr. Rilletta. Mr. Blake. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Happy birthday, by the way. <laughs> thank you, sir. Happy birthday. Um, um, I do want to. Well, first I'll say that. Uh, I uh, want to celebrate uh, uh, Carmen's Pizza. They've had seven years in business. Uh, they're a small business, and if you've ever started a small business, you know that reaching that seven-year mark is an achievement. 
And so uh, talked with Jim and Janelle, and they're doing well down on National Drive. And uh, we got sort of a pizza war going down in the south end between <laughs> Brewskis and uh, Carmen's. But, uh, uh, but uh, nonetheless, uh, both businesses are doing well, so I want to just mention them publicly. Um, Saturday, uh, this coming Saturday, uh, we do have a cleanup day uh, uh, in, this, in the south end, uh, April 11th, and we're going to begin at, uh, or gather, at St. John's United Church, 285 West National Drive at 8.30 a.m., and so all the volunteers are asked to arrive at the church then, um, and then they'll get a cleanup assignment, and so they'll go throughout the community and either help uh, either a veteran or a senior citizen or a person with a disability clean up uh, something outside their homes, either mulching or pulling weeds or something of that nature. And then we're also going to have uh, other cleanup projects where they just want to pull out tires, for example, out through some of the alleys. Uh, but that's going to happen on Saturday. Volunteers arrive at St. John's at 8.30, and then after the cleanup project, we'll have lunch for all the volunteers. And so uh, hopefully if you're available, please feel free to come out to that. Um, the last thing I want to, well, not the last thing, but I'll, I'll mention this before I mention the last thing. Uh, Mr. Moore, I did, we did have an email exchange at the beginning of February regarding potholes with the alley that you had with school buses. Yeah. Right, so, so I, was, I was familiar so, that the email, email system was working, so I also got emails and the schedules from autumn. So I, I, I know it's... Yeah. Well, maybe I'll talk to you afterwards about what email message you're referring to, but uh, but we can. I know we've emailed before about potholes in this school bus route alley, so uh, something's going on there. But um, but my last comments are related to um, several of us have had connections to the Yes Club, and um, you know the Yes Club is an after-school program for at-risk youth, and um, this Friday, April 10th, is the last day for um, uh, V Hoddle. She is retiring. And so, uh, you know, if, if many of you are able to go and visit the Yes Club between now and Friday, uh, you know, V started pretty much, well, she did start the Yes Club. I think she came in maybe a year after it actually started, but pretty much she's been the founder and been the uh, person to keep, the, keep everything moving there, uh, going from a small home to actually having a beautiful facility over there near the post office. And so uh, for those of you that have had connections with the Yes Club, please feel free to stop by, give your well wishes to V. Um, and then I believe Friday they're going to have some type of little cel uh, celebration for her for her retirement. So um, she's been a you know real asset to the community, but we wish her well as she moves on to this next chapter in her and her family's career or uh, life. Um, and with that, I'll uh, call finance committee. And then with that, I'll pass. Thank you, Mr. Blake. Mr. Bub, I'll pass. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bub. Mr. Cost, I need to call a service committee meeting for next Monday. And with that, I will pass. Thank you, Mr. Cost, Mrs. Floyd. I just have one thing. Um, I think several of the block watches are going to get together on April the 21st uh, at 6 o'clock at Community Westland Church, and the Drug Task Force is going to talk to uh, them. I know in the two block watches I go to, there have been concerns. Sometimes people don't know what to do if they see, like, needles in their front yard or, like, a pop bottle that has stuff in it. Uh, that might be meth or something, and so uh, this meeting is open to everyone. So it's April 21st at 6 o'clock at Community Westland Church. It's at the corner of 21st and Myrtle. And with that, I pass. Thank, Thank you, you, Mrs. Floyd. Mr. Guthrie. Oh, thanks, Mr. President. Um, glad that Jeremy brought up V Hoddle because uh, V has really. Um, Done wonderful things there at the Yes Club and for a long period of time. Uh, I was not actually aware of Jeremy. That's a good information. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, I, I want to share with Council that I am a proud grandpa again. My my uh, daughter Lori, uh, uh, the mother of Karis, uh, had a little girl this morning. Uh, her name is Jenna Eve. And uh, she weighed eight pounds and three ounces, and she she's quite uh, quite a little girl. Uh, I uh, I don't think it uh, it would be fair not to uh, recognize some of the uh, points that were made tonight. I I have uh, tried really in good faith to uh, uh, to do my research uh, and not uh, research via dog. Dot org, I think you refer to it as, Nikki, um, uh, regarding the, the dog issue. 
Um, and I, I'm actually continuing to uh, explore whether there are any options. Uh, one of the things that I, I feel like I've made a point um, at saying at, at a council meeting is that I would very much like to see this on the ballot. Uh, and I know some people think that that's uh, not where it belongs. I'm one who believes that it does belong there so that all citizens can speak. I don't know what the status is of your, your effort on that, uh, but as I indicated before, I would even be willing to sign a, a petition uh, to put it before all the residents of our city. Uh, I think that when um, uh, Ms. Loomis's legislation passed, I guess close to a year and a half ago, um, uh, you know, we all felt that it um, by establishing parameters whereby good um, uh, pit bull owners um, <coughs> could basically bypass the law with the AKC um, uh, training, uh, you know, we thought that we did the right thing. Um, I, I'm going to continue to. Um, look at the enforcement piece. I, you know, I've already met with some folks in uh, law enforcement community. I'm, I'm meeting with some folks in the, the uh, legal community, and uh, it is a uh, uh, it, it's a perplexing issue. Uh, but I would very much uh, like to see it on the ballot so everybody could vote on it. It's a misconception to think that uh, that you know. Everybody uh, was for the repeal because the people that were approach approaching me on the street were not uh, indicating to me that they were for the repeal. And I don't know why um, uh, there were not folks who came into council chambers, but I do know that I heard from plenty of folks who uh, did not think we should repeal it. And I expressed some of the same um, uh, things that I've said tonight. I've even told them that I think that it should be on the ballot where everybody can make the decision. I hope hope that's where it ends up. And in the meantime, I'm going to keep doing my research. That's all I can say. Um, and that's uh, all I've got, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Governor. Congratulations, by the way, on your grandchild. It's very nice. Thank you. Uh, thank you all for coming this evening. We appreciate it. We got it. We appreciate it. We'll stick around a minute. We can talk afterwards. Thank you for coming. We appreciate your attention. Uh, our next committee meeting will be April 13th in this room at 5.30. Next full council meeting will be in two weeks, April 20th here at 7 p.m. So motion to adjourn. Motion, motion by Mr. Foss, second by Mr. Rappel. In favor, single time, saying aye. Any opposed? We're adjourned.